Hello my bags, it's Jade. Welcome to the very first Assassin's Creed news video update I'm going to be doing. I've done this for pretty much all the games and genres I've covered over the years, mostly survival games, giving you a lowdown of what to expect, so while you're downloading your update, you know exactly what's going on. You can have me on in the background. Here we go. Let's run through the first proper big one, and it's good news for lovers of 60 FPS, particularly if you own an Xbox Series S. Also huge improvements to the skill tree and how you can pretty much acquire Equip skills a lot quicker and easier. Also, say goodbye to cheesing zealots with your boat. That's getting fixed as well. I'm going to list all the patch notes. Don't forget to like, make sure to subscribe, check out all the other Assassin's Creed guides that I'm doing. And that's what my channel is about, showing off usually survival and open world games, giving you hype pieces, reviews, talking about updates and giving you the guides you need. So this update is going to be weighing in at 5.3 GB on Xbox Series X and S and it's scheduled to go live for every platform at 1pm Central Eastern Time tomorrow, 7am Eastern, 4am PDT time and 11pm AEDT time. That's Australia by the way, I do believe. The Xbox One OG consoles is going to be 4.9 GB, PlayStation 5 a measly little 2.5 and PlayStation 4 4.1 GB. PC players it's going to be around 4.3. The big one is you're going to have an option now that you can choose either performance or visual quality. Well now you'll be able to guarantee 60 frames per second and if you've already seen the Ferrari, hopefully that will help a little bit with the flickering and the tessellation and tearing that does occur a little bit even on an Xbox Series X. This is something I notice anytime I'm obviously near big buildings, particularly the longhouses, that it really does start to tear occasionally, especially when you're looking out from within. So this option is going to be available for all next-gen consoles, PlayStation 5, S and X. Performance will adapt to the resolution and graphic settings to give you that 60 FPS and the quality is going to able to run maximum resolution and settings but only have 30 FPS running. Series X and PlayStation 5 will be set at performance. Xbox Series S will be at quality as their defaults. There's going to be a brand new default loading screen background, more visual enhancements to a lot of that stuff. And one of the biggest ones which is fantastic is that skills now whenever you go and choose a major skill say like guided arrow it'll unlock the path towards that automatically so making you being able to adjust and change and mix up what you want on the fly a lot easier currently at the moment you have to go and find something maybe get rid of it like that and then go ahead and upgrade every single one of the trees that you want to go along this makes it so much quicker and easier that i'll just be able to click on miasma and it'll unlock the nearest path or the best path towards it. There's going to be category sorting for your runes. Hallelujah. Nearly 70 hours in, you can see I've built up quite a collection of them. And now they'll actually be sorted out properly. They're also increasing the limit of fabric. I didn't even know there was a limit for this. It's now going to be 82 pieces of fabric. And big news as well, particularly if you're a fan of going and getting your settlement leveled up. Well, at level 6, you'll now be able to buy cloth. The altars where you can deliver items to it and get a reward, that is now going to list exactly what that altar requires when you expose it on the world map. It looks like some of your items and armors are going to be either buffed or nerfed slightly. It just simply says in the patch notes that updated gear quality and gear to their correct values. They're also adding assassination damage stats on the character stats page as well, so you know exactly what type of damage you're going to be doing. I don't know if it's a duplication bug, but it does look like there is going to be a removal of any duplicate items. It does look also like your heavy and your light attacks will adjust depending on what skills you've unlocked. Seems like a lot of the stats weren't necessarily correct based on the skills that you had. And there will no longer be any heavy attack modifiers applied to range attacks. That's been pretty OP, taking out a lot of higher level enemies with just your bow from range. It seems that is going to be nerfed slightly as well. Overall, on the Xbox Series S and X, the patch notes do say they're going to reduce the screen tearing. And it is very noticeable, particularly when I went to Jorvik. So I'm really pleased to see that's been fixed. PC users, there is a issue with RAM leakage. That's going to be stopped now if you just keep tabbing out with your alt button. They've corrected instances where the game save wouldn't load properly and they've renamed cloud saves to make them more distinguishable from regular saves. There's a bunch of graphics, audio and animation fixes going through, lots of clipping issues, lots of visual issues with Ivor's cloak. I've yet to come across any phantom or ghost poltergeist taking over my cloak, but I've seen for some of you guys it is a bit crazy how it's been acting. They've also fixed a bunch of issues where you could get stuck in the geometry of the world sometimes just exploring. That's happened to me a couple of times and I've had to just reload my save. Apparently fish haven't been spawning in bad weather in Norway. Well that's changing as well. 
and it looks like crows will no longer randomly fall in Asgard. Looks like they've fixed the bow aiming that some people have been having and NPC and boss behavior across the board. And it does look like your crew are gonna be a lot more useful during raids. And if you've been on the steel quite a bit, it looks like NPCs will now get wise to your game. So no longer can you go along just grabbing everything you can get your sticky fingers on. And it looks like there's gonna be no floating doggos. I've yet to encounter this, but apparently some of you guys have been showing me that the dogs have been going quite high. I've definitely seen some floating canoes though, when I explored the Vinland area. Blocking spring old projectiles will now consume stamina as intended. Zealots that were hit with a sleep dart can now be stun attacked, sleep tight. Zealots will no longer heal themselves while in player vicinity. I don't know if I like that or not. I know some of you guys have been really complaining that some of them are just too hard and they do keep healing them. And it doesn't matter what level you're on, they simply just are godlike. But equally, I've come across a bunch that are just way very easy to take on. So it looks like though that if you do go out of render or range, you're trying to do a bit of cheesing by getting a little bit out of the way, that's when they're gonna start rehealing. And speaking of glitches and cheats, you're no longer gonna be able to use your longship to take care of zealots. It does look like arrows will start to run out from your NPCs while on your longship. You guys have been saying that's your preferred method taking out some of the zealots. Well, be lucky. You're gonna have to go and watch my guides on taking them out now. Guards who see either shooting their mates will now turn hostile properly. They'll also hear the impact of any bodies dropping to the ground nearby. So that sounds like it's making it a bit harder to be stealthy, but apparently they have improved the detection system of NPCs as well. Particularly when you're in cities and towns in hidden detection mode, you will be able to hopefully walk by a little easier. You'll now be able to air assassinate sleeping NPCs. You can do better with your fishing rod. Some of you guys saying it was just a bit glitchy and stuff and it looks like that's been fixed now on fishing. The change may be a little bit of the sliding mechanic as well. It's definitely something I feel like could be a little bit more robust. I feel like I should be sliding down a lot more slopes than I currently am. And there's changes to the way your horse gallops as well. Now under quests, world event and side activities, assassination sequences will start to work properly for some targets. It looks like a lot of you guys have been telling me that the bit where you put the dagger right through someone's ribcage and heart hasn't been planned for you the majority of the time. Lots of, lots of bug fixes for mouse and keyboard support. Secrets now be discovered when synchronizing a viewpoint, but this won't be the case on Pathfinder difficulty. Experienced travelers are now highlighted on the world map and on the compass when in proximity. I kind of don't like that. I kind of like the idea that you would just come across a random question mark, although that icon was pretty bad. Now it's gonna be even easier to go and get some useless markers on the map that I've already know is there. Although maybe that's one of the issues. It looks like they're fixing it that it wasn't showing up for people when you bought some intel. It wasn't actually showing the correct location. If you're using Odin Sight, you will now be able to see and scout enemies a lot further away. Enemies are going to be highlighted for longer too. And Sinin's view distance of materials has been reduced, so you won't be able to use it to OP everything around you. Although you will now scout out keys a lot easier using your bird or your pigeon. Settlement building beams can now be seen using Odin Sight. One thing I really want to see is where the hell are my trophies for my hunter? Couple of you guys have been telling me that they're there, they're inside the longship house. I tell you right new. I've killed about four or five of them right now and there is just nothing going around. There's nothing on display anywhere. There's only a couple elk heads as you come in and that is it. Where's the rest of my goddamn trophies? It doesn't say anything about that being fixed. Unless I'm being really, really stupid, let me know guys. It's definitely a possibility. They've improved the enemy target lock mechanic. Selling all your trinkets will no longer give you the option to sell them again, even though you actually haven't got any. Boss power levels will now be displayed on their health gauge properly, but this won't be for regular enemies. And the codex is no longer gonna have a shit ton of spoilers. There's a bunch of fixes as well for colorblind options and regular brightness settings on HDR, blah, blah, blah. Abilities and skills, it looks like my favorite, the Valkyrie Dive, isn't necessarily gonna muck up you using any other abilities in case you get interrupted. Friendly NPCs and horses will no longer trigger body traps and they've fixed an issue where the poisonous powder trap went invisible after using Sinin. Adjusted the chain assassination behavior, players will no longer be able to assassinate a target who's tackled to the ground. And the secondary hand slot will no longer be available when a two-handed weapon is equipped. Unless, of course, you have gone on a lot, the skill that allows you to hold two heavy weapons. Flaming powder traps will no longer explode when walking over the arrows too. Now, I think this is kind of also helping the ease of raids. 
but the false open which happens when you go to a door during a raid is going to be displaying correctly even if nearby allies are in combat which means you'll be able to pretty much rush all of the gold even if your allies are way still at the docks you should technically be able to get into pretty much any door a lot quicker now sometimes it could be a bit glitchy and you would have to go and clear out some more guards for one of your allies to get a bit closer to you it seems that was a bug as they've fixed that massively now during the raids. Allies will now return to the longship properly once the raid is complete and there is going to be a timer added before you can restart a raid that was just completed. I didn't even know that was a thing that you could redo the same raid. They've added a bunch of new options for photo mode, I won't go through that too much. I have to say the territory panel is no longer going to be displayed which is good. It was annoying that it would always pop up with a little grid in the right hand bottom corner. Changing filters is going to work a lot better now as well. And the biggest one for me, which has been absolutely infuriating, getting an online error every time I'll go and try and take a look at some of my beautiful pictures. I've barely seen half the stuff I've taken because normally it says there's a problem like this. They've also added some more checkpoints to certain boss fights, problems with controllers vibrating way too much, and issues with black screen being fixed as well, and some PC specific specifications being updated too. And there we go, that is the first big Assassin's Creed Valhalla update. So there we go guys, a patch notes video. Of course, I do much more than that. Go and check out my guides to tutorials for Assassin's Creed. And make sure you stay tuned, because very soon I'll be covering Immortals Phoenix Rising and I'll be back playing Watch Dogs Legion when they get the multiplayer added very soon too. I have been hearing some rumors that that is gonna be delayed till next year. I really, really hope not. Anywho, I will see you lot in Valhalla.